I think it was seven years ago when I got a message, a phone text message from robots, computers. And the message said, prior one, servers are done, storage is done. This was the message. It sounds like a cryptic message, right? It was around 2012, I was at home with my family. It was night or evening, and I knew that this cryptic message means nothing else but Prezi servers are not serving the users. Prezi is a cloud-based presentation software. You, I guess you all know, and there is a problem with cloud-based presentation software. When it doesn't work, that sucks. Because when people went to their Prezi, it's a presentation tool. So for example, imagine people who are giving a tech talk or you giving your first ever presentation in your office when you want to convince them your, your boss that you are smarter than them or just defending your thesis. And this is what you get, the 4.0, what is this, the 4.04 or 5.01. We are engineers, we like numbers. So this is the server is done message. This is the error message we all hate. It's sometimes even worse than no Wi-Fi in the room. And I knew that people care about their presentation, even that time, it was around 2012. I knew because just before this event, even the press covered us. If there was a problem with Prezi servers, then press covered us and talked about frustrated people. So we had as an exercise in Prezi. I'm an engineer. I graduated from another university. I work with engineers and we had an exercise that we are not writing software. We are creating service for real people. So imagine people having the frustration, the pain, feeling the pain. At that time, every second, we had 20,000 users. Engineers love to call this the concurrent users. 20,000 is not too much. It's like two alta altogether. But imagine 20,000 people screaming at you, I want my Prezi back because they were frustrated, they couldn't give their important, they couldn't share their ideas. What would Chris Anderson say in this situation? So we all ran to the office because we all got this message and we knew that this was a big, 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 big problem. But there was a problem. We didn't know how to solve it. We didn't know how to solve a problem like this. We didn't know how can we engineers or Prezi, Prezilians solve the problem. Prezi is a nice story. I guess you all heard about just last week Index covered that, that we were 10 years old. We, we had a great business. We have three offices. We have more than 350 people. We created a global company with this accent from this country, from this city. It's a great story. And we never say that story, that basically we had no idea how to do that. I was just like you. How would I know how should I know how to build a technology like that, build a business like that? Just think about this for a moment. I'm a technologist, so I like to talk about numbers. I mentioned 20,000 concurrent users all around the world. What do they want? They are creating presentations. They want to save their presentation. This is 100 presses, 100 documents saved to our servers every second. Not too much. You know this country, you know the ATMs. There are 5,000 ATMs in this country. You like to get money, right? Imagine if there is one single transaction on every and each ATM per minute, and what we don't have, but just imagine this. That's only 83 transactions per second. So Prezi servers handled more transactions that time than the whole Hungarian bank industry, built by totally amateur, uneducated people like me. 
because we never done that before. So it, it's a big problem. And I could talk about how to raise money from Budapest, how to build an office or a multicultural office and work with Americans, which is a challenge itself, and, and things like that. But we learned something in the beginning that we have to learn, because we didn't know how to do that. Because I'm just a normal Hungarian engineer, blah, blah, blah. So this is the model what I developed for myself. This is my life, it's not your life. When you start a company like this, like Prezi, it's like having a, a sport car. You get a far Ferrari, you raise money, people think that you are rich, and you have to drive that car. You have to be really fast with that car on a road you don't know, and you don't even know where are you heading, right? And there is a truck behind you. The investors, your family, your country, everyone who says that it must be successful, the user, the 20,000 users. If you don't solve this problem in five seconds, then blah, 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 blah. They are crazy because it's important for them. If nobody cares about what you are doing, just stop doing. If people care about what you are doing, then you will feel the frustration. So I had to learn how to, to learn what I call the accelerated learning. It's not what you have at a university. You have to be faster. Go to market, go to business, solve the problem. And we didn't know that time how to solve this small technical problem. So my five rules of, of um, accelerated learning. Rule number one. This is maybe the hardest. You have to accept that you don't know. Hmm. You are not so perfect, you are not so talented, blah, blah, blah. But you can learn anything. This is modern science, neuroplasticity, whatever. This is called growth mindset. We have a saying in Prezi, we don't know yet. It's OK not to know, but it's not OK not to learn. Rule number two, meaningful challenges. If you don't know why you are doing something, don't do it. That's my rule, my life. I wanted to solve that technical problem because I felt the pain of 20,000 users and I wanted to create or build a product from Hungary. It was a meaningful challenge. It was not because the final exam later that I learned. Rule number three, in a business, it's so clear. Anything goes. Google it. Go to somewhere, learn it. I don't care. I'm the user of Prezi. Just solve the, your problem and learn as fast as you can. And never solve a problem alone. Never. Never. If you are the smartest people in the room, person in the room, leave that room. Science suggests that real creative work can be done only in teams, period. Why would you work alone? And rule number five, oh, and this is how a team looks like, an office looks like today. Rule number five, always better, never the best. I don't care about the best solution. We don't have time for that. We have to solve the problem. We have to learn as, as fast as we can. We do something, we, we test something. So at that time, in 2012, for example, the engineers had three competing ideas. And, and we, we didn't have time to debate, debate which one is the better one. We had to try all the three and test it. And since then, Prezi is running on techno, ten, that technology, what we built seven years ago, and that technology, even if I was the smartest CTO of that company that time, I didn't believe in that solution what we are using today. But who cares whose idea is that? Just test it and see what happens. So building a company like Prezi is learning. At the same time, my first child and then the second 
was born. Mm. If you are an idiot startupper, an idiot engineer like me, you must think about schools. What is schools? What kind of schools they need, right? You are thinking ahead. You have a lot of time as a parent. What is the best school in Hungary? What is the best university in Hungary? <laughs> I don't need to ask this question here <laughs> because it's on the other side. No. Um, <laughs> So you Google it. As I said, learning is Googling. What's wrong with that? So you Google it, and sorry for the Hungarian page, but in every country there are pages like this. They rank the top 100 schools of the world, city, blah, blah, blah. And if there is somebody here from West Prim, then there is other list saying that Lovashi is the best, which is in West Prim, which is a big problem for Budapest people, that the best school is not in Budapest. Do you know how these ranks work? Based on one measurable result, like the previous talk, and based on the results of final exams. The best school where, you, where students have the best final exams. And we know final exams. It looks like this, or the Hungarian version. I love that people dress up <laughs> in a shirt. It's totally inappropriate everywhere else in the world, I mean, in any other situation. This is final exam. And do you know why students are sitting so apart? Hmm? Because there is two things you cannot do on a final exam. You cannot collaborate. Don't talk to each other. Hmm? And you cannot use assisted technology. No phone. Because that's cheating. The law says that the two most important skills, what you need in your life later in a creative industry, are against the law. Right? It's cheating. Totally idiot thing, from my perspective. And I did the same when I was a university teacher, to be honest. So I was on the other side as well. And we all have final exams, and we all, all, all did this. That's why we are in this room. The problem is, and you can say that this is just a final exam, this is not schools. But here is the problem, what we learned from business if you rank schools based on the final exams, then they will optimize their processes to maximize final exams. Even the law says that a high school job is to prepare you for the final exam, and the elementary school job is to prepare for the secondary school. This is a myth we all have, or, or a story we are told. And this is a performance for 10 hours in your life. Never ever before and after you are banned from using a phone to solve a problem. No. Never ever you were banned to collaborate, work in team, have diverse ideas to solve a problem. So I learned that maybe education as is totally useless for my children. It's okay for you, but for my children. <laughs> so I was thinking about what if? What if we, we start thinking from the other way around? Not how to achieve high scores on a final exams I don't care about, but how do I have a happy, healthy, and useful a dad from my children. That's my job. That's in my job description as a parent. I wrote my own job description. <laughs> happy, healthy, useful. And how do you have happy, healthy, useful people in, in 30 years? You should have be happy, healthy, and useful today. Hmm. So how can they learn to adapt to a future we don't know? And how can 
learn to learn and care about others because science says that connection, relations make you happy in your life. What? Not your final exam? <laughs> so what if we start designing schools from this perspective? Personalized learning. It's so obvious, but we don't do it. What is personalized learning? What if my children have their own personalized goal, personal goal, from A to B, they want to get to A to B, and, and I help them how to get from A to B? Uh, it sounds too abstract. Here is an example. This is how a modern CV looks like, and you set your skills, and sometimes people give a measurable or quantify their skills. We have personalized life. You will have a different job. You will have a different job. You will have a different job, right? Why do we, why cannot we have a personalized education? So when we have, for example, different skills, we can have different activity. Here is an example, Khan Academy. Who knows it? Khan Academy is an online tool. You can learn math, but it's not important for this talk. What you get, it's a personalized scorecard. You are good in this learning unit, you practice this, you practice this, you are not yet there. If I know that what is your specialty in math and what is your specialty in math, I don't give you the same lecture. That would be a stupid thing, right? Or if you have a different goal, you have different activity. If you want to go to other university, to medical doctor university, and you want to be a lawyer, of course at age 16 you would prepare for a different final exam, right? You did this. If you want to be a, a medical doctor, you go to there, which is a university, and even they have a shop to preparing you for a different final exam, so what they later accept. If you want to go to Stanford, you prepare for Stanford. If you go to ELTA, you prepare for ELTA, right? Different subjects. You won't have high-level biology final exams if you carry in, in, I don't know what, teaching. And what if we have, we have micro schools? So instead of having huge schools, because we want to give personalized experience, have small schools, have, say, 50 kids with five teachers, and what if they can set their own schedule? What if we optimize, or we have only single KPI in a school, what if the flow, the learning? People are so angry talking about what kids should learn. Right? And then they forget enjoying. What if we optimize for a school that you should enjoy learning? And if you are enjoying total learning totally useless things, then there is some problem with you. That's a different topic. Uh, I love this picture. That's one of my favorite in a, from a school. We gave iPad to three girls six, seven, eight years old, and we gave them only one single question. Why do we have seven days in a week? Why seven? Do you know what's the best about these questions? That you don't really know the answer. And they solved it. It took them one hour and the iPad and searching, but I like to give questions to kids what I can't answer because they have to prepare to answer questions we don't even know. So my point is, or idea to share, I think we have to redesign schooling. Instead of focusing on final exams, focus on learning. Just learn something every day and trust that process. People will find their core and they will learn useful things. And one solution for that are micro schools. Instead of having huge schools like this one, what if we have small communities? 
and let them learn what they want and let them organize how they want to organize their school. Thank you.